The Federal Republic of Central America was a country that existed from 1823 to 1841. The country went from independence to absorption in about a year, had an independence many could say was rather politically unfortunate, and a civil war that put an end to everything. This is the Federal Republic of Central America. When Spain had the colonization going, it divided the empire into administrative divisions, with one leader each. The divisions were, for example, New Spain, New Granada, and most importantly, the Kingdom of Guatemala. After a casual 300 years, we have many colonies that support King Ferdinand VII. And by colonies, I mean white people in the colonies. The Indians was dead last on their priority list. Kings, however, was an essential, and it was not good when Charles IV and Ferdinand VII tried to figure out who would be the rightful king. Ferdinand ascended the throne and asked Napoleon for support. Napoleon being Napoleon, he made his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, the king of Spain. The administrative divisions thought, since we are colonies, we have a habit of wanting to leave you. Mm -hmm. And since Napoleon's brother oversees Spain, which we definitely don't like at all. Mm, yeah, yeah, get to the point. And Napoleon and the boys have a larger focus on Europe. Oh no. Then what is exactly stopping us from seceding? Rebellions and independencies started popping up, and Central America was among them, which became independent on September 15th, 1821. The country was divided into five provinces, which is basically the four countries that owns the area today, including one part of modern-day Mexico. The provinces had royal governors that were in charge, and the overall head of the country was Gabino Gainza. These powers were formed in Guatemala, looking at the region's previous name, the Kingdom of Guatemala. But there was a problem. If you lived in, let's say, uh, Honduras, you would probably not like that you were ruled by Guatemala. The other provinces thought the exact same, following revolt in Comayagua, León, Cartago and San Salvador. The world burning would not last long, because on January 25th, 1822, the Junta Consultive, the government of Guatemala, voted for the country's annexation into Mexico. Vicente Filosola, which was good pals with the higher-ups in Mexico, became the new ruler of Guatemala. Annexing a province is no doubt controversial, but it did bring some nice positives and qualities like abolishing slavery and free trade. But San Salvador did what it did best. Revolt. But this time, the Mexican army took care of it. All the provinces could choose if they wanted to join Mexico, for example Costa Rica. Costa Rica did join Mexico, but did not join the Federal Republic afterwards. Mexico in 1823 became a republic and gave an opportunity to leave the now republic. Vicente Filosula gave up his power and gave it to the newly formed National Constitution Assembly, which had one representative of each province. Then, on July 1st, 1823, the Congress declared independence. It looked like the assembly of the newly formed country was liberal, and the liberal Manuel José Arc was elected by said assembly for president. Noise, I'm a president for a new country with many possibilities! Alright cool man, just hope you support our liberal wants and beliefs. Hope you're not some corrupt politician just wanting the world to burn. Seeing the world burn? Me? Crazy. I will just dissolve the Liberal Assembly, meaning that I, the President, is now Conservative. I don't think we signed up for this. San Salvador, doing what it's good at, were now in revolt. Yet again. Now, this was not the normal Tuesday revolt, because Honduras and Nicaragua joined the rebellion. The Liberals had Francisco Morazan which was a general, which is the opponent, the arch-nemesis of Manuel José Arc. The civil war was conservative against liberal, Manuel against Francisco. The civil war started with a coup in Honduras, with Dionisio de Herrera being head of state. Manuel José Arc sent José Justo Milla, which we will call General Milla, to overthrow Dionisio. 
Miller attacked Comayagua on April 4th, 1827, and it was a victory, putting Dionysia in prison on May 9th. Morazan defended, but later had to flee after that Miller's forces burnt down the city. Murazan in Teguquicalpa got reinforcements of 300 men trying to get Comayagua Valley, but were attacked by Colonel Hernandez, but he won on April 29. He returned to Teguquicalpa to strengthen himself further. After going to prison and leaving on bail, he had to flee to El Salvador to try to get to Mexico, and on the way he met a good pal that caught him. 135 soldiers to take Comayagua. After a battle in La Trinidad, he installed a government putting himself in charge, meaning that Morazan was now head of state in Honduras. After the victory, he got calls from fellow liberals in El Salvador asking for help. They did not like the conservatives because many conservatives were put in Congress left, right and center. This was Manuel José Arx doing, and when confronted, he said, Oh, dear poor peasant Salvadorian, I'm not ruining your chances of getting a liberal president, but that this measure is necessary to restore constitutional order. I have a feeling that it's not the intended purpose. If it is, you are doing a very, very bad job. In March 1827, El Salvador went with the guns. Many Salvadorian troops marched towards Guatemala to remove Arc from power, but Arc was brave enough to send federal troops to defeat them in 23 hours. Arc did not stop there, planning to take over all of El Salvador, where the general would be Vicente Domínguez. Murazán, on the other hand, was planning to recapture it. Murazán had 1400 men to take over the country and took over the eastern part quite quickly. On July 6th, Morazan won against Vicente at the El Gualco Ranch. After a few other battles, some political, some with actual fighting, El Salvador was now on Morazan's side and it was just a few threats left in the country. But now Morazan wanted to march and take over Guatemala to stop Ar. Long story short, Morazan won and became president of this country. Morazan was probably thinking, what is actually keeping my power together? Oh yeah, the liberals. Who is the most liberal province? El Salvador. Thus, San Salvador was now the capital city. But it was not all sunshine and rainbows. The opposition was regaining power and wanted to go their own route. With the opposition going higher and higher time and time again, the assemblies said that the provinces could decide its own future. Just like Mexico did to them. This announcement was supported with the fact that it came another civil war due to the problems of the first one. And in 1838, in the second civil war, Nicaragua left. The union pretty much ended in 1840, but did not finish going down until El Salvador left in February 1841. Thanks for watching.